Arlene from Arlene's Creations, and today I'm going to show you how I make my patriotic flag soap. So right now I'm just cutting up some clear melt and pour soap, about 16 ounces, and I'm going to melt this in the microwave on 30 second bursts until it is totally melted. I'm using soap that I got from um, Wholesale Supplies Plus, and it's just their premium ultra clear base. Now in the second bowl, I will be cutting up some of the goat's milk white based soap and cutting that into one inch cubes as well. For this uh, loaf of soap, I am using um, the silicone mold from Brambleberry, which you see in the background there. Also the purple um, silicone mold for the stars, which I got from Brambleberry.com. So you'll see in a second. Okay, so I have my clear base totally melted. And to that, I am going to be adding some um, stained glass red powder for the red color. And you want to add a little tiny bit and then stir it completely. And then add a little bit more and stir it completely until you have it exactly the color that you want. This stained glass red is a perfect color for um, Christmas soaps, poinsettias, you know, for the flag, for the red for the flag. It's just such a nice red. I do add more to make it darker, but you can make it in any shade of red that you would like. And for this soap, I will be using Pure Seduction Fragrance Oil, which I got from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It has no vanilla content in it, so I will not be needing to use a vanilla color stabilizer in any of these layers that I am making. So I'm just going to take an eyedropper and put about four to five eyedrop dropper fill worth, filled worth, is that even a word? No. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how many milliliters that is, but I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. So now I'm going to pour it into my mold. I'm adding a little bit more red. I want it a little bit darker. So now I'm just going to pour it into the mold about a half an inch, maybe a little bit less. And I'm going to let that sit and get hard. I am going to spray it with some alcohol. You always want to spray it in between each layer to get the bubbles out. So now with my white, I'm going to add the fragrance four to five eye droppers worth. <laughs> and I'm going to stir that in completely. And while I'm waiting for my red to set up, I'll be pouring the stars. So I did start doing it with an eyedropper, but it was just taking way, 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 way too long. So then I just decided to pour it. As you can see here so don't even bother doing it with an eyedropper just I would have been there all day but I figured to do it nice and neat and not get it all over the place because those holes are so tiny and you really can't see when it's coming up to the top and it just goes all over the place as you will see which I was still making a mess with the eyedropper anyhow 
So I was like, forget this. Let's just pour it, because I will be here all day. <laughs> So as you can see, when I pour it, it just goes all over. <laughs> like I said, making a mess. But I just wiped it up and cleaned it. Not a big deal. So for that size mold from Brambleberry, the loaf mold, I did four of those star logs, if you want to call them. So four of those fit almost perfectly. You know, had a little extra. Excuse me, had a little left over, but four was good enough. So now my red layer, I'm spraying very liberally with 91% rubbing alcohol. And I have my white layer at 128 degrees, which I'm going to pour on top of the red. You might want to pour it maybe like 130 a little bit warmer as you can see it was starting to lump up and get you know hard so it was getting a little lumpy there but you don't want to pour like over 136 or 138 because then you're going to melt that second layer uh the first layer with the second layer and it's just going to be a mess now, there are techniques that you can do with that where you actually let the first layer just, you know, set up a tiny bit and then you pour the hot layer on top and it, like, makes this nice design. But for this, because we're doing a flag and we want the stripes to be as even and as nice as possible, that first layer has to be hard, spray it liberally, and then... The second layer, you need to pour about 128, 130, the warmest. So now I'm going to let that set up. So I did, after about 15 minutes, after I let the stars set up for a little bit, I did pop them in the refrigerator so that they would get hard faster. Because with doing a soap like this, it's a lot of... Um, you know, waiting for the layer to dry, waiting for the other soap to cool down before you can pour it. It's time consuming. I think this soap took me all together with everything about three, four hours to do. So, yeah, it takes a while, but it's worth it. I think the soap, soap came out super cute. All right, so I took the um, stars out of the mold. And they're cute nice uh, nice beautiful points on them very nice so what I'm gonna do now is I actually spray paint uh, spray painted oh I actually sprayed the alcohol and then poured the red soap in, but it was way, way, way too cold. It was very glumpy. So what I ended up doing with the spatula was pulling it out. That's why you saw that little bit of red on top of it. Then I just melted it again in the microwave for like 15 seconds, but it was still a little too thick. It was like 117 degrees, so it was a little too cool. It was almost like, um, you know, jiggly jello. <laughs> But, like I said, I didn't want to get it too hot and have to wait for it to cool again, so I just did it this way. But, again, spraying liberally. And then if I saw, like, a big clump or something, I just pulled that out with my tool that I have. Um, because I wanted it to lay flat, and it was, like, kind of sticking up. It was like a glob. So I didn't want that. So now I'm going to let that red harden up, and now I have melted some more in a separate container, which I'm going to color blue. So that's all we're doing here is we're making layers of red and white, 
for the stripes on the flag, and now this is going to be the blue part of the flag in the corner with the star. So I'm just adding a little bit of my liquid blue color, which I think I got that from, where did I get that color from? I want to say either Brambleberry, I'm not sure, or um, Nature's Garden. Sorry, I don't remember. I had bought it a while ago. It's actually the first time I'm using it. So now I'm adding the fragrance. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but um, this fragrance is pure seduction. And it has no vanilla content in it. So I do not need to use any vanilla color stabilizer, which is awesome. Otherwise, you'd have to add vanilla color stabilizer to a separate bowl with the fragrance and stir that and wait for two minutes and then add it to your soap base. So to eliminate that, just use a fragrance that does not have vanilla content in it. And this way, none of your layers will turn and they'll stay the color that you have them. So this mold is also from Brambleberry and it's a rectangle um, cavity mold. So I'm just pouring some of the blue, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. I end up doing four. I don't know why I did three to begin with, but I end up doing four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this get cool enough. And by spraying the alcohol on it, it actually cools it down. Where I can stick my, um, my star logs into it. So I don't want it to get hard like with the crust or a, you know, like a skin on it, because then it's not going to sit in there. So I'm just waiting a few seconds. I'm going to spray it again. And now each one of these star logs, I'm going to spray completely all around them with the alcohol. You see each cavity is about 125, 124 degrees. So that's good. So now I'm just going to spray completely all around the star and stick it in the mold. And you want the points on the star to be correct. So you want the one at the top and the two on the bottom. And you're just going to place it in like so. And I can't emphasize just how much alcohol, like, sometimes I see people making melt and pour and they do one little spritz and I'm so afraid that it's not going to stick. So I just douse it. I mean, the, the smell of it goes away and you smell the fragrance through the soap. It doesn't stay in the soap, so I'd rather have a little bit more than have the soap fall apart and not stick together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the rest of the blue on top of the stars and fill the cavity to the top. Again, a little more alcohol. And I didn't have enough, so I had to make some more blue, which I did, which I actually put a little bit too much color in it <clears throat> so on those last two cavities in the actual soap the bottom part of the star is a little bit lighter blue than the top but you really can't notice it I mean I noticed it because I did it <laughs> but to just look at the soap you, uh, somebody else's eye would never see it so now I'm doing another layer of white on top of the red so as you can see I sprayed it with the alcohol poured the white and then sprayed it again to get any bubbles popped. So now in that mold, I have a red layer, a white layer, a red layer, and a white layer. Now I'm just waiting for my blue to get cooler. I'm adding fragrance. You want to fragrance all of your layers. And now I'm going to just pour the last two cavities up to the top. 
and then fill in the other two because I had some, you know, a little bit left over. So I said I might as well fill them all the way to the brim. So that's what I did. These soaps will be so nice for 4th of July, for Labor Day. I know Memorial Day just passed. Um, that's what I made it for. I actually put pictures up, uh, up of them on my Facebook page. And, you know, this loaf only made 10 bars and I sold out of them in two minutes. Literally, like within two to three minutes, I had people writing, I want four, I want three, I want one, I want two, I want one. They were gone within three minutes. So I could, didn't even get a chance to put them on my Etsy page or like really advertise them or anything because they were gone literally within three minutes. So I will be making more lobes of these for 4th of July and I'll have them up on my Etsy page. So this is how they come out of that rectangle mold. And that's going to be the corner of the flag with just the one star. If you want to put more stars, you can. I think next time I do it, maybe I'll try to put four stars, like two in the bottom and two at the top. But it's such a small area, unless I can find a smaller star mold, that would be good. But these stars, you know, are kind of big to, to fit, you know, four or five or six in that one little bar of soap. So I don't know, I have to play around with that. And also, if you can find a, a loaf mold that's smaller than the one you're doing the stripes in, you can just, instead of making separate bars, you can just make one long log with the star in it and the blue around it, which would be so much easier because when you see how I had to put this together, I was trying to figure out how to do it. And I said, oh, I'm going to have to add clear and blah, 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 you'll see. So I'm just fitting them in. And I did cut off the sides a little bit because they were too wide and I wanted more red and white going up the side of the flag. So as you can see, I'm cutting and I'm just fitting it into the mold. Like so. And I'm just trying to, you know, get a feel for if they're okay in there, which they are. But then I decide to turn them upside down so that the bottom of the star is more towards the white and there was more blue on top. So I take them out. Now what I'm doing is I'm spraying this white layer, which is already hard, and I'm just adding a little bit of white melted soap. Because when I put these blue bars in, I want them to stick. So I'm just adding some of the blue, uh, white. And I hope I'm explaining this okay, because it was my first time ever doing it. And I do think they came out cute. So that's why I wanted to share it with everybody. So now what had happened was, but I think I deleted that part of the video. When I poured in the white soap, like I'm doing now, I right away put one of the blue ones in, and then the, because it was just so liquidy that it went all up the front of the soap and up the side. So I said, oh no, I can't have that. So I took it out, I wiped it off, and then I waited it, I waited for it to get like, um, how can I explain it? Like a little bit of like goopy, like, um, I can't explain it. I'm trying to think of the word. Almost like a paste, like a, uh, you know, thick, but not hard. And then I, pl you know, sprayed it and then placed it in and like kind of squished it down and then it stayed. So you don't want to put it in when it's too liquidy. You want it to be a little bit harder. See how I took it out? See how it ran all up the side of the mold? So now I'm wiping it all down. And then what I did was waited and put them all back in. So I put them in when, when that white soap was a little bit harder. So now I'm just pushing them to the end. But now as you can see, um... 
there's a gap in between each bar of soap. So I said to myself, well, when I go to cut this, what if I don't want to cut it where that line is, you know, where the end of each soap is, that they're not going to be even. So what I decided to do was I turned the soap on its side and I just melted some clear. I didn't add any fragrance or anything to it. So I put it on its side like that. I sprayed alcohol down into the seams all on the sides. And then I just took some clear melt and pour soap that was at about 125, 126 degrees, like it was getting thick. And I just poured it so that it dripped all inside those gaps. So now it's going to make it a solid soap. And it did make a little bit of a mess all over my counter, but who cares? The final product came out just the way I wanted it to. So all that soap is just seeping down into those cracks and it's going to make a solid bar going across. And even when I cut the soap, I didn't cut it on any of those lines and all my soaps are solid soaps. I was so pleased. So I'm just spraying with alcohol and I'm going to keep pouring. And it did get all over. See how it's up there and it's all filled in so now I'm just wiping it down the front so it gets all into the front gaps like I said this layer I did not um I didn't fragrance it I just left it the clear and I'm just making sure that all those spaces are filled So I'm going to clean up the table with the uh, scraper. I have so many of those scrapers because I use a couple to cut my soaps. I use some to clean the tables. When I bought them, I bought a whole bunch of them, like four or five. And for some reason, I'm always missing one. It's either in the dishwasher or somewhere. So now I'm just cleaning off the front of the mold with the soap and cleaning off my table. And after I cut the soaps, I am going to take a potato peeler and clean off the top of that blue with all that goopy clear on it. So that's going to be all cleared off, you'll see. So now I'm just going to let this sit. I'm going to prop it up and just let it dry completely. But yeah, I'm going to hit the Dollar Tree and go to a couple places and look for something that exact shape that next time when I make these for 4th of July, that I can just make one solid, you know, little loaf, mini loaf going right across the top. And I don't have to do separate bars to eliminate this whole entire step of adhering it with the um you know with the clear soap in between the bars because that just made a mess and i mean it took took this is live time so it took two seconds to clean it up but so now what happened was i thought i was videotaping but my camera shut off so what i did was after it was nice and set i sprayed it added the red layer which only went now in this little thin space, wait for that to set, and now I'm putting the, the last white layer. So it ended up being red, the whole loaf, white the whole loaf, another red the whole loaf, white the whole loaf, then the blue, and then up the side, a uh, red, and then this last white. And then I'm just going to let this cool. I actually put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. And then it was all set. And then I was unmolding it. You'll see I unmold it. Now I'm unmolding it and I'm actually putting it on my um, cold process 
soap cutter from Bud Hafner just to make some score lines on it because I'm so terrible with cutting glycerin soap. Every time I put it on my mita box and cut it, it comes out so uneven, like one bar is like seven ounces, the other one is five ounces. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I took the whole loaf out, I'm putting it on the cutter, and I'm adjusting it to where all the bars are even. And I'm just going to pull down the, the, the leather and just get little tiny, you know, like uh, indent lines with the, uh, with the guitar strings, with the wires. I think they're guitar strings, actually. Just so that when I put it on my miter box, then I have a guide of where I have to uh, place my my scraper to cut it because as you can see when I try to push it down there's it only went in like maybe a half an inch and that's as far as it'll go otherwise it'll snap so it won't even go any further than that but that at least gave me the lines that I was able to cut the soap So now I have my mita box and I have the soap in and I already cut one bar you can see on the back. So now I'm just taking my scraper and putting it where all those lines are to make evenly one inch bars. And I think it came out pretty good. Not one soap fell apart. They, the blue stuck together so nicely to the sides and the bottom of the white and the sides of the other little red and white stripe on the side. The star in the middle, perfect. Like, I can't believe how good it stuck together. I'm so happy I thought of putting all that clear down into the gaps. And this way I was able to cut it wherever I wanted. I didn't have to cut it where, where the soaps met. So as you can see, I'm just cutting. I'm speeding the video up. And there you have it. They're all cut. Now it's time to clean them up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, um, I have one of those cheese cutter things. Like it, like it, it's like a potato peeler, but it does a big side of cheese, which I actually did the front of that one. That was the end. And um, there was a back of another one. So I did clean up those. I just didn't film it. And um, yeah, see that one I'm going to clean with the potato peeler, uh, the cheese peeler. Because it's very wide. It's not like a potato peeler that's thinner. It's very wide. So you can get that whole front of the soap with it. Works out really great. I think I got it from Wolfgang Puck. So, um, yeah, so this is how they came out, and I got 10 bars out of that uh, loaf, and I'm going to, here I go with the potato peeler, so I'm just doing the sides real quick, and the top, you know, just to clean them up, get that, uh, all that hardened clear soap off the top see how much nicer it looks when you do that and then see the white on the blue so I get that off and then on the other side get the red off of the white and that particular one that I was just holding um, I did the, the front of that with the cheese thing. 
until I clean them up. Now I was going to show you how I wrap them, um, because as soon as I got done cleaning them all up with the potato peeler and the cheese peeler, I, um, wrapped them all nice and saran, nice and tight, and saran wrap. But when I was filming that, I was starting to film it, right here, um, my camera cut out. So, so this is how they look. And, um, yeah, I ended up wrapping them with the saran, then putting them in a cello bag, and then with red, white, and blue ribbon. And I think they look super cute. And I wrote, God bless America, and then put, um, Leathers and Lace Soap Company in the ingredients. So thanks for watching, everybody. And give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. And also um, hit that notification bell. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And I will be putting up a new video very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.